Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a first look video for ADSR. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the new features that were rolled out in SynthMaster 2.8. I know ADSR hasn't historically covered SynthMaster, but I've used it for a couple years now and it's slowly becoming one of the synths in my typical rotation. And I thought I would share this with you for two reasons. First, uh, it, it just came out, and I, for those of you who use it or maybe you don't know about SynthMaster, this will be a helpful video. And second, some of these features that they rolled out inside of 2.8 are a godsend. They really address some of the issues with SynthMaster, in my opinion. So if you don't know anything about uh, SynthMaster, I'm going to spend about 45 seconds talking about it. So if, for those of you who do, skip ahead. It's made by KV331 Audio. It's been around for a while. It's actively developed. The, the GUI, the, the user interface isn't the prettiest, but it does work and you can change the color of it. But it is a multi-mode, multi-form uh, synthes or synthesizer. So you have these different types. You have basic, which is going to give you your usual suspects of like sine, triangle, square, sawtooth. It's like a virtual analog. And then you also have these, in this basic, you have single cycle waveforms, which is really interesting. Because you have all these basic, basically sampled waveforms from really famous synths like the Fairlight, the Cor uh, Korg, Mellotron, Moog, Oberheim, all those really cool synths. So it's basic synthesis mode can act like silent, for, for instance, but you have all those unique waveforms. Then you have additive, you have wavetable, vector, and audio in. And you have four oscillators, two oscillators in a layer. So it's kind of like silent where you have two layers. Okay, so that's a crash course in the synth. It's, it's, almost, it's a little bit semi-modular in that you can move and choose the uh, signal inputs but it's not uh, like on the level of like zebra or some of the other actual modular synths out there but that's the idea of synth master it can it's one of those synths that's marketed as it can do it all and it really can so let's get into the new features of 2.8 first thing i want to discuss with you guys is the new filters those two layers and in each layer you have up to two filters which is really cool it gives you four filters so let's talk about the filter types that are typically there you have digital and virtual analog. Well, there's these new four types of filter modes now, which is really cool. So first one is Ladder. Ladder is an emulation of a mini Moog, and you have the usual suspects of different types via this algorithm. You have low pass, high pass, band pass, that sort of stuff. So let's listen to this real quick. I'm gonna play it on this feature based type synth that I have called up right now. So let's listen to this. It's a really musical sounding filter. All right, and again, that is emulated off of the Moog. Now under that you have the diode ladder. Now this one's really cool. It's, it's modeled after the uh, Roland TB303, the really classic iconic bass synth. So this wouldn't be super applicable on this sound for instance, but we can try it real quick. So yeah, that, the, the resonance in the 303 type filter is really musical. You can really get in there and do some stuff. Now under that you have the, it's called the SVF. And this is the, or let's actually go down to the byte first, the byte filter. This is modeled after the famous Korg MS-20. So this is another really interesting one. And in this mode, you have low pass, high pass. The diode ladder, you have just low pass. So let's go back to the byte, low pass, high pass. So you can hear the differences. They actually do impart a different sound, that's for sure. And that was leaving everything how it was. Just cycled through a few different of the modes. Now next you have the uh, SFV. And this is the state variable filters. And this is uh, based on like a zero delay feedback filter. So it's, it's really clean sound. It's really surgical. All right, so that's what's going on there with the uh, filters, the new filter types inside of SynthMaster 2.8. Let's go down to the 
envelope section, they have added a couple different new types of envelopes. So now you get analog ADSR envelope types, and they say ADSR1, ADSR2, ADSR3, and ADSR4. And what they did with these were these, uh, they're modeled after a, a Moog sub fatty envelope. And the attack decay times can be anywhere from one millisecond up to nine seconds. So it's really cool. It's, it's, it's a little bit more musical sounding, less digital. And if you're wondering, like, well, what if I don't want that, that type? You also have the uh, MSEGs and our multi set, you know, segment. So you can do really t- any type of uh, ADSR that you want there. But yeah, so you really have everything that you'd ever want in terms of the uh, uh, envelopes inside of Synthmaster now. So I think that's really cool that they added those. Now, the next thing that actually is really nice is that in the layer mode, you have the effects on a single tab. So that was one of my main gripes with uh, Synthmaster. And that was a lot of people's gripes was that there, you had a lot of embedded pages. You, here's a layer, here's a layer, LFO, effects, browser, preset, right? It wasn't that easy to navigate through the synth. Well, the developers at KV331, they've, they listen to their user base, that's for sure. And this has been a request for a long time. So the effects, the layer effects, not the global effects, different. These aren't the only effects in SynthMaster. But the layer effects like distortion, lo-fi, ensemble phaser, chorus, you can, uh, you can even get uh, compression in here, that sort of stuff. What you have, in, in essence, is you have everything here with redesigned interfaces, which is really nice. So you can actually see what's happening on screen, which is always helpful anytime you're using a uh, effect preset or effect plugin in a synth. You have lo-fi, you have ensemble, you have you can you can load up different effects here, but you can also rearrange these in the signal flow, which is really cool. So they kind of took one from Serum's book, which I think is amazing. And it really makes using the synth a lot more musical and it just makes it a lot easier. So if you guys are synth master users, definitely check that out and you can rearrange those what, what blocks of effects or module, effect modules you see in your effects, you can move those around. So don't, don't forget that because that can have an important, uh, it, that can really affect the sound. Now, there's a couple other things I want to talk about that they, uh, that they did, but there's three more things we're going to discuss. And the first one I think is, or the, for this next one is an absolute game changer for me. What they've done is they've added a whole new way to do modulation. And if you're a massive user or a serum user, you're going to be in heaven. I hate modulation matrix matrixes because uh, one of the first synths I ever learned was massive. So it it just makes so much more sense, for, in my opinion, just be able to look at a control and be like, oh, I want to modulate that. I want, the, I want this envelope to control the filter, drag it in, and not go to a bunch of drop-down boxes. But that being said, the modulation matrix in SynthMaster was... It wasn't as concise as, say, Silent. So what they've done is they've given you kind of like how Serum has the options of either the Mod Matrix or Drag and Drop. You can now drag and drop modulators. All right, so let's look at that in practice. Let me go to Envelope 2. I'm going to make a real short uh, decay here. We're going to make this have a little bit more pluck and attack to it, for instance. So let's take that, click on ADSR2, drag that over to, let's do this to Filter 2, actually. Let's drag this over into filter two. Do you see that green line appear there? That's your modulation depth. So it works just like serum, just like massive. So now if I turn this, uh, turn that depth up. So you have all those options. So that is an amazing update, in my opinion. The controls are a little bit uh, fidgety, like to get this little crosshair to kind of appear right there, you uh, have to kind of hover over it sometimes. But the uh, feature, the skill, the the feature is there at least, which is really cool. (laughs) All right. Let's talk about the uh, next little feature that they've included inside of SynthMaster. And this is an interesting one. They actually have a straight up drum sequencing, kind of like old school drum machine sequencer in it. It's really cool. So let's go to the presets. I'm gonna click DR Funky, load that up, go to layer. And now if I click the ARP tab, you'll see that this is a drum kit. 
Let's let's listen. Let me play something. Right, you can change the time, which is kind of cool. Right, and you have all these different kits. Now you can't load up your own sounds in it yet, but I could see that being a feature that is added. You can double click things to uh, get them to go away or just click once on them rather. And if you want to get a uh, step sequence back in, you can just click. Let's get a kick there, kick there, right? So now if I play a key, right? So it's a really cool, fun little thing. There's a lot of possibilities with this. Right, so that's a really interesting thing for a arpeggiator. Now they've also added some new features to the actual straight up arpeggiator. So let's go to uh, just let's, go, let's find like a lead sound, for instance. All right, so I have a lead pulled up here. So I'm going to go to the arpeggiator, and now typically, like let's say I turned on the arp. Right, there's like one of the default presets. You have arp, you have chord sequence, all these different modes. Pretty standard stuff with most arpeggiators, but. If you click it one more time, it'll say record. And now we can actually record in like chords. Maybe you're bad at playing. You can record in polyphonic information. This is a monophonic lead, so I couldn't necessarily do uh, a chords. So what we're going to do here is we are going to just record a little arp in like a minor seventh type chord pattern. Or I don't know. Well, let me get the bass in here actually, and we'll see what happens. But So I'm going to hit play on this and go back four bars. All right, did you see the notes? They actually come in as I play. So let me hit off, turn it back on. Now when I hit just like a C note. Right, there's the actual progression that I played. I can make it faster. I can add cool little notes. So now when I play this with the sound, I can just find the key or with the synth or with the other synths in the progression, I can just do this anywhere I want. Now there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. You have slide, hold, duration, swing, you have different modes you could do again. If this wasn't a monophonic sound, I could do chords with it. And you can go to the chord mode. It'll look a little bit differently if you see this. You can actually input chords. But there are the main new features inside of Synthmaster 2.8. There are some other features like how it handles MIDI for, for really uh, new MIDI keyboards like the Rolly Seaboard and all that sort of stuff. But those are the main ones that I wanted to touch on for this first look video. All right, guys, that sums up this Synthmaster 2.8 first look video. Like I said at the beginning, I am Echo Soundworks. If you guys haven't subscribed to ADSR, definitely do that. If you have any questions or comments, post them up below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.